Hello, I thought I would do a video where I pulled five notable steals out of all of my steel stuff that I've done. Uh, these aren't going to be like the top five edge retaining steals. There's much more to blade steel than edge retention than my rope cut test, of course. There's all sorts of attributes. These steels here are the ones that I think are really excelling in their own little nook of the industry. So um, it's not just going to be the top five. Spoilers, Maximet isn't on this list. I don't think Maximet is quite necessary. I think it's, um, it, yeah, it's got the highest by far number in all my cutting tests, but it's not particularly rust resistant. It's fairly brittle. Spyderco has yet to perfect the heat treat of it, as seen in a couple of um, people's knives that have had to be sent back. So Maximet's not on this list. I'm not going to be going pure edge retention here. This is stuff about, um, you know, just the general experience and just the general recommendations, I think. So I am going to start near the top of my edge retention scale with some CPM 20 CV. So this is a Benchmade Griptilian in the, the 2016 configuration with uh, G10, blue G10 liners and CPM 20 CV on the blade. Yeah, this is an excellent steel in terms of edge retention, but what's really come out of, I don't know if you've been casually watching my rust resistance test lately, is um, it's actually really, really stain resistant, like as in more stain resistant than VG10, from a couple of different companies so far, uh, more stain resistant than the lower end sort of higher chromium steels. It is, you know, it's not quite there with LC200N. Really, really stain resistant though. Um, I've covered this stuff in salt and there isn't a single permanent blemish on there that has even needed to be sanded out. Um, and also on top of that, it's actually rather easy to sharpen as well. This is almost the perfect steel. What is imperfect about it is you pay a shitload of money for it. So it's one of the more expensive steels going, but like the saying goes, you can, you know, edge retention, stain resistance, pick one or pay a lot of money. This one, you pay a lot of money, but Jesus, it good. This may well be the, you know, no horse in the race, um, best knife steel going. This M390 and the CTS204 CP are apparently all very similar. Uh, I can definitely vouch for this specific, kni specific knife here. Um, I've done the tests, they're quite recent videos here, and you can see it performing in all different manners. And it also holds an edge like crazy too. So very impressive stuff right there. The next steel uh, is probably my favorite steel of all of these. It's not one of the most edge retaining, it's somewhere in the middle. This is LC200N on the Spyderco Spidey Chef. So this one is a hugely rust resistant steel. Um, you can utterly mistreat this stuff and it does not mark or tarnish in the slightest. This um, has been left out overnight. It's been left sticking in a stump simply because I've forgotten about it uh, on rainy, misty, foggy, nasty nights. No problems at all. This knife in particular, it's titanium, bronze, fossil washers, LC200, and it's more or less rust proof. The clip is sort of galvanized or powder coated in some way, but that would be the only weak point and maybe the screws if they weren't also seemingly powder coated in something. The thing about this is, Usually steels that are this rust resistant hold an edge like butter, but this is actually up there and it performed in my rope cutting tests uh, up there with your mid-tier um, powder steels, so up there with your S35VNs. Um, it outdid or did almost as much as Spyderco's M4, I can't remember. It really does hold a crazy edge and I was really, really surprised by that. I was expecting maybe lower, um, low 100s or something, but it really, really knocked it out of the park. So. Um, really, really notable steel as well, LC200N, for sure. The next uh, is sort of the overall um, when price is a factor. So uh, C CPM 20 CV, it's pretty damn good, but you pay a lot of money for it. You know what you don't pay a huge amount of money for, but is excellent? CTS XHP, especially from Cold Steel, but also from lots of custom makers, lots of, it, it's a steel of choice for a reason. Performing a little bit like um, RWL34, uh, a little bit like they say powder coated D, uh, powder metal D2, but really, really corrosion resistant I found. Cold steel coats their knives just because they think coating is awesome, but I really don't think you need it. I haven't noticed any rush, uh, edge deterioration on this one. I really must test that though. But in terms of edge holding, it outbeats the S35VN and S30V, which are often more expensive uh, amongst a whole bunch of others around that point as well. Um, it's tough. I haven't had any chipping. Uh, this is a really good hardworking knife, the American Lawman, as a lot of cold steel knives are. Haven't noticed any chipping. It just seems to be worth its salt and you're not really paying a great deal for it. So 
that's probably like my overall go-to mid-range and it's crazy in this current age that this is mid-range steel 10 years ago this would have been the maximum of the steel world but the fact that this is just mid-range yeah, we're definitely living in the golden age of um of blade steels that's for sure but anyway cts xhp is my pick like out of all those sort of like common mid sort of powder metal steels that the good knife companies are using definitely my favorite so very very notable as well the last two are going to be specific treatments of certain steels old steels um well-loved steels and the first one i don't have a knife to hold up and demonstrate to you but the first one is uh, Paul Boss's uh, 420HC treatment from Buck. Now, this steel is available in crazy cheap knives. So, Buck's like, you know, $15 caper um, little Skinner knife. Um, Buck's um, uh, Vantage uh, Select. Really, really cheap knives, and it absolutely it kills the 420HC that you'll find from Gerber, that you'll find from Leatherman. You can see my tests, and it does um, outcut all those by a good margin, and it is also rather stain resistant too, even on um, the more bead blasted sort of finishes that Buck uh, is often inclined to do with it, like on the um, on the Vantage Select models especially. It'll be in your Buck 110. It'll be on your uh, Buck 119. It'll be in, in, in any Buck, frankly, that has 420HC. It's going to be Paul Boss's treatment. And there is definitely something to how you put your seals in the oven. And um, he has the right temperatures dialed in for sure because it brings life to the edge and it brings life to the corrosion resistance and it makes for a tough, just really, really good low budget steel. In terms of the ultra cheap steels, uh, Buck's 420HC, it's sort of up there with the what other companies would be selling as their they're mid to, to high tier steels. Sog will say that VG10 is premium Japanese steel. Bucks 420HC is chomping right at its heels in terms of overall performance. So it's great stuff. And lastly is another uh, treatment of a very, very old steel that I cannot help but admire, especially lately during all my um, more extensive testing. This is um, O1 steel done by Forrest Tyndall of Tyndall Knives. So this stuff here, uh, I've had this knife for a you know, fair while now. Um, and this has sort of become, at first this was going to be my, when I was doing my saltwater testing, this was going to be my benchmark knife. So this is the knife that I was going to rust. So I was going to polish it off and I don't let the rust get too crazy, but it just kind of didn't. Not much anyway, like not as, not as O1 should, not as other O1 I've had does. From say my Cold Steel Recon Scout, I couldn't keep the rust off of that very shiny, very high polished surface, which as you can see here, this knife has as well. So this isn't like... This isn't particularly sealed, it isn't particularly super high gloss, it's just a nicely finished sort of satin finished blade. And it just, yeah, it does kind of rust, but nowhere near the way it should. As well as that, it's an, O1 is an ancient steel, it's been around, well not ancient, but it's been around since, you know, the 50s. And this is out cutting 1095, it's out cutting hell most other carbon steels, apart from your D2 tool steel variants. And um, yeah, so D2 and A2 are the only ones, and Nylox sort of, out cut it in my rope cutting test. Plus, um, it takes an edge fantastically. So this wore my Tormek edge really, really nicely after just a few passes on the Tormek stones. And um, just in general, it's a really tough steel too. You can watch um, Forrest uh, on his Instagram. He'll chop, he'll chop through bolts and through pennies with this stuff, not roll it at all. It's not gonna be, it's not 3V. It's not gonna hold that edge for a crazy amount of time, but for a steel that he can make these fantastic looking knives out of. So he makes, you know, these are handmade knives that are about, you know, in the $200 region. Um, it's not like it's 1075 or anything. This is really, really good performing stuff and definitely a notable treatment and a notable steel from this particular maker. Another um, one that I've been told is really, really good is TM Hunt's 01 steel, uh, which is, um, you know, available in that big old TM Hunt chopper and also in some sort of other custom knives that he heat treats for other people. But um, yeah, as far as ones I've experienced, the Tyndale 01 steel is probably my carbon steel of choice. It is excellent and I'd really recommend, if you are looking at one of these knives, if you're thinking, oh no, I could get a Bark River with A2 for you know about the same price, this has something special to it. Because yeah, it may not hold the edge as crazy long as that A2, but it's gonna be super, super tough and it's gonna be super, super rust resistant as well for a carbon steel caveat there. But anyway, very, very highly recommended uh, steel from Forest Tindall there as well. So anyway, um, those are five notable steels that I felt like talking about tonight. I'll probably do some more of these if you're interested. Um, 
I just kind of felt like making a video and that was the first thing that jumped into my head. People like still talk, well, certain folks like still talk. This guy doesn't. He's falling straight to sleep. Basil. Get nothing. It's barely a cat. It's like a potato that we feed.